Welcome to the studio of NIOS. I am Anjali Bajpayee from Banaras Hindu University and today we are going to talk about significance of environment on growth and development. Let us first begin what is growth. According to Harlock, growth is change in size in proportion, disappearance of old features and acquisition of new. Crow and Crow states that growth refers to structural and physiological changes in an individual. And if we have to define development, then again according to Harlock, we can say development means a progressive series of change that occur in an orderly, predictable pattern as a result of maturation and experience. Anderson says development is concerned with growth as well as those changes in behavior which result from the environmental situation. So we can say growth and development are the influence of an individual's environment. For this, we have to see what is an environment of an individual. Environment refers to the living and non-living components of the natural world and to the interaction between them that supports life on earth. Interaction between living and non-living world and the life which happens on earth is a product of this interaction. The environment is a provider of goods and services and also recipients of waste product. We get lot of things from our environment and we also give back lot of things to our environment. We take oxygen from our environment and we give out carbon dioxide to our environment. And as a result, many times we are changing the constitution of our environment. Environment is basically consists of biotic components and non-living or abiotic components. The biotic components deal with the organisms like the plants, the animals and the non-living or the abiotic components deals with the mud, the oxygen, the air which we have around us, the minerals which we have around us. If we have to define environment, then according to Ross, environment is the external force which influences us. Anastasi says that environment is everything that affects an individual except his genes. Therefore, we can say environment is responsible for growth and development of physical, mental and social traits in an individual. Our environment includes what we eat, that is the nutritional status, where we live, what type of house, what type of locale in which we are living, the medical care, whether we have proper immunization facilities, whether we have had proper medicines when we were sick, basic safety, whether we live in a neighborhood that is safe and sound, education, what we study and where we study. Our school has a lot of effect on our development and our family support. The families, the children which grow in the joint families have better environment, they interact with others in a better way than the children who grow in the nuclear family because they have not interacted with many people. Aristotle argues that humans are not born with knowledge but they acquire it through experience and experience comes through environmental interaction. As it is said, when the individual has, is born, he has nothing with him. The tabula rasa theory which was propounded by imperialists like Locke and Bacon in the 17th and 18th centuries said that children when born are blank but they learn from outside, from interaction by their environment. Over the past 100 years, the study of environmental influence on human growth and development has focused on influence of social and economic factors, family and household characteristics, urbanization and modernization, nutrition and other features of the physical environment such as attitude, temperature and climate and all have found that these influence the growth and development of an individual. All component of human development are interwoven and are influenced by environment. The home, community, physical aspects and school environments influence the way human behave, think, engage with one another, grow and process emotions. Nurturing environment contributes to positive health outcomes and fewer developmental changes and adverse environment 
contributes to adverse changes in the development. For example, when the circumstances like poverty are factored in, it is clear that its impact on environment poses a threat to individual's growth and development. It's suggested that a nurturing environment can help promote healthy growth and development. Infants and children from low economic environment are often underweight and experience stunted growth. Poverty possesses a developmental risk such that the impoverished environments possess threats to individuals' mind, body, and spirit. Poverty also increases the likelihood of poor academic performance, physical health problems like malnutrition, obesity, high rate of depression, child abuse, and physical injury. Under these conditions, children often underperform in school, and many find it challenging to graduate from high school when they are older which limits individual progression within the society. The growth of a child therefore depends upon the interaction of heredity and environment. If any is changed, then the growth and development of child changes. Now let us see the various type of environment for growth and development. We can divide this into different types. First of all, when the baby is conceived in the mother's wound, the prenatal environment is very important. Like we all know the story of Abhimanyu, that he heard about the chakra view in his mother's womb and then he was able to carry out that breaking of chakra view in the Mahabharata war. The chemical balances of the mother's body and the presence of condition or potential toxic substance can alter the development process of an individual. For an example, the mothers that use drugs or alcohol or have viral or bacterial disease or have direct traumatic injury during the pregnancy, this affects the development of the fetus. The fetus may not develop in the normal way. It may have certain defects which may occur during the birth. Next is the physical environment. After the child is born, he comes in contact with his surroundings. The air child breathes, the nutritional value of the food child eats, all influence his growth and development. For example, exposure to the conditions that lead to disease, accident or injury can influence the child's growth and development. They may cause stunted growth and accordingly the development may not happen. Certain cases of child abuse and neglect also inhibit growth and development in a normal way. Therefore, if the physical environment is nice, then the child development grows in a systematic and normal way. For this, when we consider the case of school, we should see that the schools are attractive, the buildings must have playground, there should be space to roam around freely, there should be adequate library facilities and equipment so that the child which grows in the school environment feels happy and grows accordingly. Next is the social or the cultural environment, which consists of the norms, values, belief systems and morals. The standards of behavior that regulate the child's life in the cultural group in which the child is raised influences his growth and development. As we say, much depends on the company one keeps. So, the child acquires many of social traits from his peers and therefore it is important to see if the peers are having good habit then the child will automatically possess those good habits. Since the child learns a lot from his peers therefore being in school fulfills his instinctive urges of self-assertion, gregariousness and comeback. The child if surrounded by good cultural environment, good family background and good social tradition develops into a cultural citizen, the ample opportunity given to him to participate in social activities help him to unfold his talents and capacities. Next, the learning environment, the degree and type of stimulation available in the child's immediate environment, that is his classroom, his immediate learning environment, affects his growth and development. The sensory inputs promotes and shape cognitive development. If we give positive feedback, then the child develops those behaviors. If we give negative feedback, then those behaviors are 
inhibited. Simulation in adequate quantity and intensity promotes establishment of and shapes neural pathways in the brain. Therefore, schools should stimulate interest in the child about various learning activities. It should provide situations for self-analysis so that the child can analyze in himself and grow accordingly. Proper system of internal assessment and regularity in students should be encouraged and the teacher should be considerate, trained and happy. All this will influence the child's development in a positive way. The emotional development, emotional environment shapes the personality and affects the development of self-esteem, identity, trust and the ability to enter into intimate relationships and personal resilience. The nature of a child's interpersonal relationship depends upon the degree of nurturance available to the child. School and family should inculcate adequate amount of self-control in the child so that he is able to control his emotional urges. When the impact of environment on growth and development is being considered, the approach of Yuri Braunfer Brenner has to be considered. He emphasized on two points in development. First, environmental context are important influence on a child's development and the child is an active participant in initiating and responding to the developmental process. Braun Fenn Brenner sees this process as influenced by four overlapping ecological contexts, that is, the naturally occurring circumstances surrounding the living beings. Braun Fenn Brenner calls them as the microsystem, the mesosystem, the exosystem, and the macrosystem. If we discuss each in detail, it is the microsystem. This is the context which is the immediate setting in which the child or the young person lives and the relationship among the people in this setting. Because of difference in people and relationship, microsystem vary widely and therefore cause development to vary among individual children. For example, for a preschooler, the microsystem may just include his immediate family, but for a teenager, the microsystem may include his family, his friends, his teachers and others. The next is the mesosystem. This concept is the array of setting and relationship setting that a person experiences as he or she grows up. A mesosystem is a set of microsystem. For example, as a preschooler gets older, the mesosystem expands into the classroom, the neighborhood as well as his home. Next is the exosystem. This concept is the array of settings that affect a child's development even though the child may not be directly experiencing these settings. For example, a parent's workplace may remain invisible to a developing child, but it affects the child indirectly by enhancing the socio-economic status of a parent. If the parent is happy in his workplace and is earning sufficiently, that, that will itself affect the child's growth at home because the environment at the home will be comfortable and more peaceful. The macro system, this concept is made up of the ideas, custom, installation of a society that influence a child development. That is, the belief of the society affects the individual's rearing practices. Like again, I give the example of girl rearing practices and the boy rearing practices in the Indian situation. In older times or previously, boys were giving more emphasis, their education was given more emphasis, girls were giving more emphasis to learn household course. But now the things have changed and we see the effect that both boys and girls are performing equally well in all the sectors. So these concepts of development given by Braun Ferberner affect whom the child gets to know and the, what they get to do as they grow up because all his microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem and macrosystem directly affect his growth and development. Hence, we can say that what we are, how we react and how we perform can very well be influenced by where we live. Our environment has a direct implication of a personality how we grow up as future citizens, what we have experienced in our life will 
be the result of how we grow and how we develop. Our personality will be directly influenced by our surrounding. Thank you.